are essentially from the same creator. There won't be a conflict. The conflict will probably arise in our understanding of those facts. Well, that sounds reasonable to me. Um, my advice, if you pardon me for offering a, a, no, advice at me, you are never going to win the fight against evolution. It is a fact. What you should do, what you should do, is to look at the Quran and reconcile it with evolution, which is what the Christians have done. In our we we learn about science and the Quran. By the end of the day, we all came to one conclusion that the Quran is evidence of science. So what science has proved to be um, just recently is already proved in the Quran 1400 years ago when it was written. Uh, but, but that doesn't include evolution, apparently. No, it doesn't. Um, um, that, so what does it include? It includes stuff like the shape of the earth, um, about the, um, the mountains, how they secure the earth and how um, in the sea, the two waters, they don't mix, the salty water and the drinking water, so it's um, pure for us to drink. They don't mix, but they pass through each other. Salty water and fresh water don't mix in the sea? No, it's like, um, the it's a natural barrier. I yes. was shocked they, that RE elbows out science like this. So you think the Quran is a good source of scientific information? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Right, and you're, you, you're the one who wants to be a doctor, is that, is yeah. that right? That's yes. I can't be sure indoctrination triumphs over real learning like this in other faith schools, but I do worry there's nothing to stop it happening. I think RE must be taught critically so that the factual evidence of history and science are properly respected. In my view, RE should be part of a national curriculum and subject to Ofsted inspection like other subjects. The Church of England told us it wouldn't oppose a national curriculum for RE, and I welcome that. The Board of Deputies of British Jews claims critical thinking is intrinsic to Jewish faith education, and their inspectors inspect their school's RE in a way that matches Ofsted requirements. But then, why not let Ofsted inspect their RE in the first place? I think there's something deeper going on here. Supporters of faith schools claim they're in some way necessary to allow groups to hand their religious culture down the generations. I understand the argument, but what is the impact of this across our society? One former Muslim feels concerned that faith schools are resurrecting barriers where there need be none. When I first arrived in the UK back in the early 1970s, um, myself, um, my friends, my family, we encountered a lot of racism and we often felt excluded and things have improved. And it shocks me, it saddens me that um, people like me are now choosing to self-segregate um, when others have worked so hard to allow us to, to mix and, and to join in and, and to be part of a, a wider community. For me, what's exciting about the world is the range of ideas we can encounter. And to, to separate yourself off from that, from the rest of humanity, frankly, is, is deeply, deeply tragic. Some faiths claim they actually promote community cohesion through their schools and that this is recognised by Ofsted. But, as we've seen, Ofsted doesn't inspect what's taught in faith school's RE lessons, nor does it consider the school's admission policies, which can discriminate along religious lines. I'm worried that faith schools, in fact, encourage separation from mainstream society. Now I want to ask how important it is for parents to have the right to preserve their culture through their children's school or whether this creates a dangerous and divisive them and us mentality. Faith schools are on the march in this country. One of the key claims of their supporters is that they create a confident sense of identity amongst pupils. But that very sense of identity tends to set them apart from others schooled to believe in a different God or a different theology. In not mixing at school, surely there's a danger that these children will grow up as strangers. We have a warning from our own recent history about how destructive faith education can be when it helps forge tribal identities. The human psyche has two great sicknesses. 
One is the urge to carry vendetta across generations, and the other is the tendency to fasten group labels onto people instead of seeing them as individuals. One of the great scars is Northern Ireland, where you can see the badges of Protestant Catholic divide on walls and flags, on bunting, wherever you look. Nowadays, some of this may be put on for the benefit of gawping tourists. Thankfully, Northern Ireland seems on the verge of a new era. Politicians, police and professions, both Protestant and Catholic, are working together. But one area the Good Friday Agreement couldn't touch, tragically, was education, which threatens to reopen the sectarian divide. For children, the tribal divisions start in the nursery. In July 2010, it was reported to be children as young as nine who led the riots, throwing stones and shouting abuse at the other side. Around 95% of pupils in Northern Ireland go to either a Catholic or a Protestant faith school. Most of them never have the opportunity for a proper conversation with a member of the other faith. They usually marry into the same faith. And if they meet in the workplace, it's only because of strict employment laws to promote equality. Surely here, of all places, they can't see segregated faith schools as a good thing. Surely they should welcome mixing up Protestant and Catholic school populations. At present, the overwhelming majority of Catholics go to so-called Catholic-maintained schools, Protestants to controlled state schools. I want to meet both sides. I think it just boils down, down to choice, and I believe, uh, for me, the control sector have the schools with the history, with the uh, record of academic achievement, and that's where I'd want my children to go. But I think increasingly, parents are looking at what are the best schools. The hard reality is surely that there's very little crossover, isn't there? One might say that humans are innately driven to be divisive and to form tribes and to separate out, and there are plenty of ways in which that can happen. Skin colour, language. But religion is a pretty good one to do it with, and isn't it a gratuitous one that we could do without? Oh, well, certainly not. I think uh, religion's been here for thousands of years and will continue to be until the Lord comes back again. But does it have to be so divisive? I personally don't see it as divisive. You don't? I don't you, see you it live as in Ulster and you don't see it as divisive? No, no, I don't see it as a... I see it as us having differences, and hopefully we can work through those differences. Uh, differences relate to our theology, the way we worship, uh, I believe all our churches in need of a reformation and I'd love to see another reformation come. Perhaps at the deepest level of my concern about faith schools is the assumption I'm encountering that children are somehow the property of their parents and their parents' religion. It's all about parents' choice, and I found that strongly echoed on the Catholic side. Our Catholic schools, our Catholic ethos, adds value, gives a sense of belonging, a sense of community. That's what parents want for their children. A child to a parent is a very blessed thing, and the vast majority, almost all parents, will do what they think is right for their child. Is that not a legitimate human right? Oh, it's certainly legitimate. Well, but you don't agree with that. Well, uh, I'm, um, I have all sorts of issues with faith schools. But you clearly time. don't agree with that. Let, let you state that. OK. Um, I worry about segregation of children in anywhere, not just in, in Northern Ireland, on the basis of their parents' uh, religious opinions, because it seems to me that religious opinion is a a pretty odd way in which to separate children out. Richard, I think we need to nail this one. Do you believe that parents have the human right 
to choose the education for their children or not? Well, I think that they that, do. That's the, that's the core of what you're asking yes, me. Yes, do, do, is, the parents, do you afford the parents the human right? And it is a human right. I also that they can that choose the system of education that they wish for their children that's most consistent with their beliefs and understanding of life. Now, you're seeking to impose your view on other people, and I think that's wrong. Well, I think you should respect I, everybody from it. Are you a parent yourself? Uh, yes. Well, what do you have for your children? What do I? What do you, what do you uh, have for your children? What do you want them to do? I want them to be open-minded. I want them to be sceptical. I want them to ask critical questions. I want them to, 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 to seek knowledge for its own sake. I do not want to impose my own views on them. Good. I respect that. Yeah. What you said is a perfectly legitimate view. But you should afford other people the same respect. Once you begin to engineer or, or you begin to thwart parents in terms of their parental choice, you really end a dictatorship, Richard. And maybe that's where you no, want to I be. No, I don't want to get into that. But, 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 but that's what you're essentially saying. You're, you're, you come from this from a, a premise of, here's what you think is right. I'm coming from the premises that parents should be allowed to make choices. I do believe in taking the faith out of faith schools, and yes, that would impinge on both the Reverend Gibson and Mr. Flanagan's rights as parents to choose their children's education. But look at the result of parents' rights as exercised in Northern Ireland. Are parents' rights so important that we allow them to risk dividing the two communities forever? The trouble with rights is that there are conflicts between opposing rights. What about the right of free expression versus the right not to be offended? In the case of education, children have rights as well as parents. Children have the right not to be indoctrinated, not to have their parents' beliefs forced down their throat, but to make up their own mind after a proper, balanced education. There goes a right-wing Tory child. I see there's a...